time isn't a straight line. It's more like a big ball of wibbly, wobbly, timey wimey stuff. That's a quote that you can probably pick up from any time travel movie. Uh, while researching this theory, I believe I can relay this information fully, if you will. Today, I'm going to discuss the truth of time travel, the history of the idea, and the differences between time travel and science fiction. First, the theory itself. According to an article by Paul Davies, time is always out of focus. To some degree, in a sense the billionth decimal of a second, you can time travel forward across the planet. If you, if you were to fly from London to New York, and then directly back to London, your watch would be just that tiny bit out of sync with a clock that stayed in London. Because gravitational pull affects how time passes. Time relative to Earth's gravitational pull is much different to the way it passes in space, because space has much, much less gravity. Therefore, through Einstein's theory of relativity, time can progress much faster, say, on top of the Empire State Building than it would on the ground. But only two seconds at a time. The way you would time travel, say, a few years in the future, you would have to go roughly the speed of light out in space and keep going for about 25 light years, and you would get just a couple years into the future. Because you'd have to be lowered to the point of singularity above a black hole. If you were able to survive that long, you'd only be able to survive for five, maybe six seconds. But if you stayed there for those five, six seconds and got out safely somehow, you probably would have jumped into the future about 3,000 years, maybe more. And that brings up time travel to the past, which is not unheard of. It's much more difficult, and as you can tell, traveling to the future is very difficult. It's just that much more difficult. Neil Johnson, he is a physics professor at Oxford, says, only in theory is time travel to the past possible. Now, to discuss the, uh, the basic relationship of space and time is proven through Einstein's theory of relativity, in that Time is directly related to space, which explains the gravitational pull effect. Now, because wormholes bend space and time, they work much differently to traveling to the future. If you were to enter a wormhole, you would pop up probably somewhere on the other side of the universe, but it changes the way space and time work. Time is so fluid, it's bendable. And a theory as to how both future and past time travel work is this. This is a hypercube. In a sense, the hypercube is two cubes that exist in the same space, but not at the same time. But they're there for one moment exactly. Now, some people say that if you would crack open a hypercube, and if you had one big enough and you were able to step inside, time would change completely because it's essentially a wormhole in the box. But you would also end up somewhere else in time. Now that you understand time travel a little bit more, you probably are wondering, why did time travel even come into our minds? If you think about it, time travel was a really abstract thought. So how do people imagine going forwards or backwards in time? Well, H.G. Wells was the first author to bring about the idea in middle, late 1800s, in his book, The Time Machine, where an inventor builds a big contraption that takes him forward in time, but not back. One of the earliest time travel stories in all of human history is in the Mahabharata, which is a Hindu religious book. And in it, it describes a king who travels to the heavens to talk to God. 
But when he returns to his kingdom, he sees that it's about two, three hundred years in their future. And another one is the Talmud, which is a Jewish religious book, which was interpreted into the story of Rip Van Winkle. If you don't know Rip Van Winkle, he takes a nap under a tree, wakes up 70 years later. He hasn't aged today, but his grandchildren have grandchildren. So that is in a concept time travel. And because it originated in fiction, we should probably look at the differences between it. Because lots of time travel movies, books, and such, you can do all kinds of things with time. But that's not how it works in real life. A paradox in time would be going back in time and accidentally killing your grandfather. If they die before you can be born, you can't go back in time to kill them. Say if you and a future version of you met, and there you were standing side by side, and you look roughly the same, except one was older. If you were to, say, cut off your finger, or bite your hand so hard that it left a scar, this paradox in science fiction would say that the older version would all of a sudden have a scar on their hand or a missing finger, whereas they look perfectly fine before. So today, I have discussed time travel, the truths of it, the history of it, and the differences of it to science fiction. And after listening to this speech, I hope you all understand reality just a little bit more. Thank you.